Welcome to this episode of the TMC Project. If this is your first time here, I'm happy to see you. If you're returning, awesome. In this episode, we talk about a couple of different things. We get deep into Asperger's and neurodiversity, as well as the competitive spirit. You're definitely going to love this episode. Please share it with a friend. If you're watching on YouTube, give a like and subscribe. We're here to change how you think, or at least show you a new way of thinking. Let's jump into the episode. Uh, so at its short point, I just want to let you know, I didn't know this. So basketball is a very interesting sport because one player can truly dominate and change a team and two players can, can almost completely revolutionize it. I mean, when you think about, um, I mean, the best example is Kobe and Shaq because they were a two pair, but you also have Michael Jordan and Pippen. But a lot of people also look at the trifecta of, of them two plus Rodman. So it makes it harder. Um, but all basketball players kind of agree on one thing. It doesn't matter what your stats are. It's kind of measured in rings. It, whoever's got like, if your stats are equal and you've got rings and the other guy doesn't have rings, the, the player without the rings even agrees. It's just like, unfortunately, yes, that does seem to be the measurement. And I just kind of want you to appreciate that small aspect. And so I want to follow that up with, if you don't know, and I didn't, Basketball works very weird. It's an East, East Conference and a West Conference. So Chicago Bulls have always been in the East because you know where Chicago is. And I don't know if you know, Salt Lake City kind of on the West. Uh, the Utah Jazz have always had an amazing team. Uh, and they went to the playoffs almost 19 seasons in a row. So they'd win the Western Conference every year. Uh, but they, uh, they have no rings. And on this team, there are two people. There's Carl Malone, who... I, didn't, I, I just didn't know enough about basketball to really appreciate what, uh, what it meant. And, and as you, you've seen me grow into basketball and really understand it on a – dude, it's like a fight. It's like a one-on-one -on -one sport. So either way, uh, Carl Malone, hands down, people consider one of the best players of all time, not only on stats, but what he did for his team. They've never won an NBA because the Bulls existed. And then the Lakers existed. It just – it sucks because you could literally be uh, one of the best players in the entire game and have zero rings because you have, if you have to make it to the playoffs. <laughs> because your team's a bum. <laughs> yes. And, and the simple fact is 82 games. You could just lose a couple. And I, I watched the history of uh, like how Utah Jazz had never won uh, any rings. And it, it kind of sucks. Like you, you look at them like they would do great and then have random failures. It was almost like an odds and even years. Now I tell you all of that to talk about John Stockton. <laughs> uh, John Stockton was the other half of uh, Carl Malone. Um, they played 19 seasons and at no point, uh, and they basically went to the playoffs every single time, every time. Uh, and okay, there we go. I'm done talking about the preference. I can get to the point. I believe John Stockton had autism and I'm only for, so I just want to talk to you a little bit about this because dude, maybe it's just my question, everything nature, but I, I constantly swing towards, do I have a bias to, do I have a bias to seeing things that aren't there? You know, when you're looking for it, you'll find it and it doesn't need to be there. The mind does that just as well as it finds the things it's looking for. Yes. Can we agree on that premise? Oh yeah. hundred percent. Sweet. So, you know, I have this constant argument in me. Am I trying to prove myself right? Or am I just trying to find how I'm, uh, I'm right? So I have to kind of attack it. And I just kind of want to tell you, uh, I'm not going to go deep into him. I'm just going to tell you the triggers that made me think of this. So he was small. He was uh, somewhat uh, very, very, Nice, but didn't say a lot. Always pleasant, consistent to a key. Didn't matter. Would work injured. There was like, it wouldn't matter. There was no way. Uh, his numbers were always consistent, better than anyone. And you'd never notice. He didn't go for flashy shots. All that's really interesting. But then, <laughs> then you start listening to people just, dude, it's always the off the cuff things. So you hear it's like, he would just see, he would see where every player was and he would just know where they were. He always seemed to know what the opponents were going to do. So he'd always have the perfect pass. He had more steals than anyone else. We're talking high level attention to detail that can't be done in the conscious mind, but for it to be done over 19 years consistently screams autism. Very, very, uh, just <clears throat> everything about it. And I found it very interesting as a benefit, man. It's so hard because at, my, at this core, I'm trying to figure out how to talk about it where everyone feels it's a stigma. Even people who, even when I point out to people, like the, our world, even, even with the people in, uh, in the autism spectrum, uh, although there's no ego, the simple fact is you can't point it out specifically because the mind doesn't even want to, they don't want to, they, it seems to be a negative or it seems well, to be that, a negative. That specific word is, 
if you instead replaced it with Asperger's, you might have a better response. A hundred percent. I should use Asperger's. Um, you know what's funny? It's a very stupid reason why I don't and I'm letting the world control me. That's a specific type of autism. So I keep it generic. So I have a wider spectrum and I'm not saying ASD autism spectrum disorder. Fuck that shit. I'm sorry. That's uh, so like, I'm still, worried. I'm still trying to focus on that. Um, but at, when dude, it's, it's very hard. Cause how do you, I need to find people who are g- genuinely Asperger's, but don't have your level of awareness. And I think that's the thing. I'm wondering how often high level neurodiverse, because I think the simple fact is we're 20% of the population, but I think we're 15% of the overachievers, period. I, I, I'm going to prove it just through sheer numbers to where I want people to realize like, nah, if you like basketball and you are autistic, I think you should really only focus on trying to do that better. I don't think, I think you should start leaning into being crazy overachiever if you have ADHD or if you have autism, because if you try to play in the middle, you're going to fail. It's, we're not built for that. Well, that's we're, like, I know you've heard me joke about like, I'm always in Rome, like the win in Rome. And I'm like, I'm always in Rome. No, if you just looked at probably what his upbringing was, if he lived in a neighborhood that was basketball, that's what you do. So he probably just sat there and shot a bazillion times just to hone that in. And, you know, the, the players on the court thing comes natural. I mean, that's just, you know, it's <laughs> where they are and where they're going. You know that. So, yes, especially after 19 years of playing the game on a high level, crazy. And and I think that's where it is. I think, and I don't know how to change it, and maybe that's the mission in life, man, to give, it's almost like saying, hey, John, I think people misunderstand John Stockton. The reason you were great was because of uh, your Asperger's. Feels like you're subtracting from it, where it's, no, you're supposed to think of it from a holy position. All of your traits make you a great basketball player. But to say that ADHD and Asperger's are not the things that really separate the good from the great, the 10% from the 2%, it's just, I just don't have enough proof to the contrary, Dustin. I don't. And I'm looking hard. And it's weird because I was hoping I would listen to his his, uh, Hall of Fame speech. Man, you guys are tricky. You guys write on purpose. You can't ever hear intentional writing from you guys. It's it's too, it's just very real. Sounds very human. It's very, very... (laughs) It's a lot of blend in, hundred percent. You gotta blend in, <clears throat> dude. I, I was like, I was like, oh, I'm gonna listen to his Hall of Fame speech because, dude, I found all of the ADHDers from, uh, from from the from their Hall of Fame speech. The one that I finally thought was Asperger's. Nah, man, shit was beautiful. Touching, talked about his family, his loved ones, every name that actually had an impression on his life. He had. Oh, killed me. I was like, okay, that's fine. I'm going to have to like just watch a lot of random interviews and I need to listen to how he describes his strategy. But man, I, that, I don't want to get too deep in that, but I thought it was very, very interesting. And I do, I do want to, I want to find a way to talk to him and I need to find a language. And I think, I don't know, man, I, I don't know. I, we'll figure that out later. Uh, I just, I think it's very interesting. And I think people, I don't, man, I just want to preach the fact that You have a, I think you're 400% more likely to be ultra successful if you lean into your neurodiversity and don't let it seem like or feel like it is, I don't know, man, do you ever feel like you're less because your autism gives you so much? No, it's just where it lacks. Where it lacks? Like the, the social shit. I mean, I know I could be a superpower if I could talk my way into the fucking position, but it's not a thing. I don't, you know, like something like that, you know, like you're playing on the court. So that shows you don't, he never had to talk his way into that. He got there. The shit that I do is computer based or logic based or algorithms or whatever else. You don't just get a spot doing that. You have to, you know, network your way up and all that bullshit. Well, Mm. that's not going to happen. So. Okay. I think that's I think it's also why we find less Asperger's in sports in general, where ADHD will always give competitive competitive and like the inability to give a fuck about anything other than the win and whatever it takes. What are you talking about? There's nothing else that matters. Well, and they're the ones that yeah, they're they're the outward competitive, like competitive against the world. So mm-hmm. you have to do the showboat shots and things like that to prove that you're the better one. The autism mm-hmm. is just it's him against himself. I'm trying to get this shot. 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 You know, not, I'm going to show these fucks that I can get this shot. 
So that, you know, it was hilarious. And that was the biggest trigger. It's like, you don't understand. He was as good of a scorer as he was a passer. He didn't need to take the best shot, whatever the best shot was. If it was passing it to Carl Malone, who had flashy k- kills. Dude, here, when he quit, when he stopped retiring, he didn't have a send-off year. During his off-season, he just said he was no longer, like, <laughs> like everything. I I- that. <laughs> it's been fun, guys. Have a good one. Dude, and when you look at, when you even look at, like, a Hall of Fame enrollment speeches, on average, they're about 15 to 20 minutes. His was 13. In and out. In and out, man. It was it was pretty it was pretty funny. I I don't even know how to fully like appreciate how funny it was. Uh, so, yeah, I I want to talk now. Let's just completely move over. I want to talk, and I want you to help me remember. And I kind of want to walk. I want you to walk me through your your initial experience when someone had first said, "Hey, you might have this," and if you could tell me just like the the dustin the dustin's you know the the at its core we're talking about mindfulness man prefrontal cortex awareness right the difference mm-hmm. between knowledge given to <clears throat> you now know and, and on a different level you understand you understood the difference between oh this thing's handing me a bunch of information versus oh i have asperger's uh, and i don't even like saying i have asperger's because that whole sentence fucked up what i was trying to get into your mind and i don't know if it felt that way but the realization of what that actually meant regardless of how it measured. Can you tell me about that? Well, I don't know if it had anything to do with the two situations happening so close together, but I was in the psychology class and we had a book about, you know, it was basically our psychology book or whatever. And each one of them at the front to the chapter would open up and talk about how, you know, whatever, how it worked on, so it, you know, gave a case example, basically. Do you remember and the case example? Oh yeah, this dude named Tom. <laughs> you even remember the name? Tell me so, about Tom. So he had he was at his like sister's house, and their friend of the family that they've known for like twenty years shows up, and the the sister comes running out, gives her a hug, like oh my god, it's been so long, blah blah blah. And Tom's just like hi there, and you know she just passes into the house or whatever, and. In essence, it's like you wouldn't be able to tell from looking from the outside that the dude had ever met her, you know, talked to her cordially, you know, tried to be pleasant, tried to, you know, accommodate. Would you like any coffee? This and that, you know, blah, 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 blah. But it was like there was you could just in the way it was worded, you could tell that or at least I could tell it's like, I don't know, even the the hey there, like. Dude, I've said that to people like a million times, you know, working with them five, seven years, whatever. It's like if from the outside, it would never look like I even ever knew them, you know, just it's there's no engagement. There's no need for any of that. They're just it's another body passing by. So you're just like. So can I ask? You know? So right there, you you told me, a uh, huh, or uh, <clears throat> it sounds more like a huh. There's a, obviously a difference there. So when you first read that, what was it like? What did you hold on? Like, what was the objectivity that you grasped onto that you started to manipulate? Like, you all of a sudden you had a ball. It became Play-Doh because you were able to grab it. And you're like, oh, there's why does the, what? What about that? Like, clicked in you? Like, how come? Well, it's funny. They use the <clears throat> mainly it was the exact same words that I used. There was like three or four different things that the guy said that were, I mean, word for word, what I say, you know, and that was yeah that right there was just like huh that's odd you know like whatever this dude has maybe i have that like maybe that's the difference and so you know and then it goes on to talk about tom like crazy excelled at his job but just this one segment of his job and he hated being around the people there and you know opted to call in sick every year on his birthday and you know everything else like that just to not be engaged in the social situations made sure that he had pto lined up for all the holidays and different things like that. I mean, besides StubHub, I basically did that everywhere. And StubHub, they were just shitty about it because if you uh, opted out, you had to work. But I didn't want to work. I mean, I didn't. these people didn't have to work, so why should I have to work? So I would show up to their thing for the minimal allotted time. Like Liz would be like, and it's funny, before I got there, she would just say that and everybody would go. Once I got there, she would have to give us time limits and everything else. Like you have to show up and you have to be there for an hour and a half. Things like that because they had never minutes. Played. That's a lot to ask, man. Ninety. So, you, want, you want an hour plus another thirty? 
<laughs> exactly. I mean, exactly. So like, it was, you know, they had to implement minimum times to these events after I got there because I'd show up for 10 minutes and leave. I don't care. Like that's, you know, originally you said, just come. Okay. Here I am. Here I go. Bye. <laughs> 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 so <clears throat> that was part of it and then we had to keep this like intraflexion journal or something like that some woo woo crap whatever that basically as we went through each chapter we had to you know write how we thought and felt and all this junk about whatever we had just read and all of mine was just thought 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 and at one point the teacher comes up and he's just like, yeah, Dustin, he's like, if you don't mind staying back after class for a second, I'm like, okay. And then <laughs> like, crap, were you like, okay, what the hell do I got to do? Can I just can I ask, oh, when you were like, okay, what was your initial reaction to wondering why? Like, I don't know if you wonder, that's a good question. Did you have thoughts to how come I, you need me to stay late today? I just, <clears throat> I mean, I'm always going to, you know, just throw it at the way I am. I always throw that, you know, negative, but funny thing or whatever. It's like, God, what, you know, what the hell is going on now? Does he think I'm cheating or something? You know, like I'm the only, you know, not the only, but there's like three of us with an A in the class and I've got a high A. It's like, what the hell is this dude think I'm cheating or something? Jesus Christ. So hung out till after the class and he's like, Oh, uh, you know, I didn't mean to hold you back or anything, or I hope I'm not making you late or whatever, but, uh, have you ever been tested for, uh, autism or more specifically asperger's i was like no and he's just like uh well you might want to think about it he's like i've been in clinical psychology for 27 years and i've been teaching for 10 of it and he's like i'm pretty sure you're going to find yourself there i'm just like you know oh like that guy in that story that we just did he's like yeah pretty much exactly i'm like hmm. i was like yeah that seemed about right and then he's just like, all right, well, here's my office, whatever, feel free to stop by. I specialize in something or another and some kind of psychology, uh, behavioral uh, adjustments after being released from prison, some blah, blah, blah. That was like his specialty. And I was like, that's cool. And then that was it. That's pretty funny. Uh, so so let's, let's see if we can, can kind of continue that narr a narrative from there. Uh, you know, uh, he, his words, Oh wait, pull back. Thought, 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 thought that's, that's, I want to dig in. I want to unpack that a little bit. Um, I don't necessarily know if I can tell you the difference between my thoughts and feelings. <laughs> so even when you're like thought, 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 I tried so hard to like understand, you know, like, I don't uh, So what are you writing down in your <clears throat> monologue journal that are thought, 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 and not reflection? Well, it seemed like, Oh, like, it seemed like what he was looking for is like the, the, I felt statements and crap like that. Like, you know, I felt this guy, you know, could do better or blah, blah, blah. If he da 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 things like that. And it was like, mine was just a, you know, summary of what I read and with, you know, thought applied to it. Yeah. I don't know. Was I, it, I think, or this is probably a combination of both. Cause you know, like, <clears throat> that this is would usually start it because or you know the from what i read the person blah 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 x uh seems to have been you know pre-diagnosed or something like that it wrong and then i might go a couple sentences in because then if you read later on they said this and da da da, da so it's just pulling facts and realigning them so you take the fluff out and then lining them up so it shows what i saw as opposed to everybody else would be like, oh, I felt little Jimmy got robbed of his childhood and this and that, blah, blah, blah. I don't care about that. That wasn't what I was doing. You know, you said, where was the, where did this go wrong? Well, it was in the diagnosis, not how Jimmy turned out or they went to prison, all that crap. You know, that's, that's the other side of equals. Okay. So where everyone was at its core, uh, us normies and obviously uh, on my side of the spectrum, we're giving uh, uh, our feelings about this, this equation and you're merely trying to uh, describe the, what's on the, uh, on the equal side. And then, you know, not and basically restate the equation. You're just trying to rebalance. Yeah, that's it. all exactly. Just stating the equation minus all the fluff. Cause the fluff seems to be putting you know, narrative. Yeah. Narrative in there where it shouldn't be. That's not what was we were doing. 
No, like if I, you wanted a, a story about Bob, we could write a story about Bob. That's not what we said. We said we were figuring out, you know, where things went wrong to why Bob is now in prison. And everybody else is just like, you know, oh, his mom failed him and they could, you know, da 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 da, and they should have done this. And it, he probably felt bad when this happened. All that, you know, rats ass about all that, you know? So what? He was the guinea pig in that experiment. You don't feel bad for the guinea pig. So I, okay, the word care comes into my mind a lot. And so, so I don't bury the lead now because I'd rather let you, let you know what I'm trying to accomplish because you seem to do better with the equals. I'm trying to just find questions to ask to, that will blatantly not trigger the, hey, do you have? Because then I'm putting not necessarily <clears throat> the ego, but I am putting a part of our, our, our measure that seems to get in the way. <clears throat> Could I just go with people like, man, do you even care? And then whatever the question is, like, let's say I see the cut. It's like, do you even care about this, 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 that, or the other thing? Do you think just putting, like, care doesn't have a negative tone to you, or does it? Well, it's funny. It's one of those that's like, in words, when it's being said, I have to stop for a second and analyze. I mean, I don't know if that's just me, because, you know, especially after running that so many times, it's like, I can pretty much now answer fluidly that, no, I don't, you know, I could care less about myself. So there's no way I can say that I can care about anything else outside of me. I know this, you know, it's why I'll never have pets or kids or probably another relationship. I don't care enough outside of inside of me to care enough outside of me. Like, so, you know, in the, if you want to say fairness of things, you know, that wouldn't be fair to anything I surround myself with. So why am I even going to do that? Ooh, hundred percent. Yeah. That's, it's very mindful of you, bro. It's very mindful of you. And, that, and that's not, that's, that's not an Asperger straight. That's, I think that that's, that's that prefrontal. I think that's, I mean, we're, I, I hate to call it human because honestly, man, I, I don't know if our prefrontal cortex is what makes us human. It, like, I, I think it's a different thing. I just, I don't necessarily know what that word is yet. I, I, I really don't. It, it seems to be an antenna. Uh, how old were you when, uh, when you were in that class? Uh, roughly 30, 30 to 32. Okay. Yeah, before that, I just thought that, you know, obviously people come with different intelligences, and I thought I just had a higher intelligence, and that's the way it came, you know. But I never really cared to read into mental disorders or whatever else. It was like, well, that know, word doesn't help, life. right? <laughs> who's, in yeah. who's, who's trying to look into disorder, bro? Well, my whole life, everybody's just like, you're smart. So, I mean, when you've got the entirety of Rome telling you you're just super smart, okay, well, that must come with the territory. Mm. And at that point, did you just assume every, like, did it seem like that they had different intelligences? But what I'm really asking is, in your mind, did you think that they had, so yours is smarter, but yours hands you things. Yours gives you visuals. Yours doesn't like, most people don't factor, that most people don't think of their intelligence as an object that hands things. But yours, as far as I can tell, you've always had a conscious awareness of it being something being given to you. And a lot of that's got to do with the actual corpus, like the breakdown in the brain that breaks down. So that way it's not just in the shadows. It's very clear. It has to walk into the daylight to get to you. Did you just think that other people had a, their intelligence was an entity in their mind and it was just handing them shitty answers? Yeah. I mean, for the most part, I mean, cause you can see most of the time where people on board wrong or didn't hear the question right, or notice that it, it filtered in wrong. Like, you know, that probably is around teenage years when I started. Well, of course, mine was all changing too. You know, before that, it was like, I was crazy, crazy visual. Like I could just flip through pages on a book and then read it later if I needed to. Like it was crazy visual. And then teenage years hit, I don't know how much to do with drugs and how much to do with just chemical changes in me but it started to be more aware of outside of myself and less solely like focused on the inside. Like at any given point when I was really young, I didn't know if anybody was around me most of the time anyway. You know, there was not no bandwidth going out to even care about that. No one was ever beating me or raping me or some crazy shit to where I had to have situational awareness. <clears throat> I was alive. I wasn't hungry. Cool. And at that point in age, literally, 
I mean, the bandwidth that gives us this thing to hold is our prefrontal cortex. It's, it's not big enough. It's not strong enough, but the thing in you is super powerful. So whatever consciousness you have, it's, it's, I mean, it owns it. You don't yeah, have a consciousness. Solidly trying to figure things out. Like, you know, started with just taking the little matchbox car and pushing it back and forth and watching the wheels spin, you know, and it goes from there. It's like, why is this spin? What's making the spin on a car? Well, why is that car different than the train? Why does the train need the smoke coming out the top? You know, just then, you know, you can imagine at that age trying to come up with these answers to things. And I had my grandpa who was fairly intelligent with things like that. So I had him to ask, you know, I had my grandma sheltering me from anyone saying anything negative about me constantly asking questions. So, you know, and we had Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> so I went to that quite often if there was anything to do outside of their knowledge base. <clears throat> was, did, now, did you go to them because it was painful to, like, not pain, it was taxing on the mind to figure it out because you knew when it was wrong, but you couldn't find the right? Well, I could tell with most people when they were just talking out their ass, basically, like you or I'm not going to say you, but I can I'm a great tell, example, like, bro. I talk on my ass till I figure out what's right all the time. I just let that shit go and listen. <laughs> well, there's a difference between saying it just for the saying it to figure it out as opposed to somebody, you know, don't teach something that you don't know. Stamping. And, uh, I, I, I'm I could, spitting ink. Other people are trying to stamp. Yeah, I could tell when somebody was free-forming or f- coming up with this crap as they're telling me because it doesn't fit into everything I'd already packed in as far as knowledge, and I didn't pack in anything incorrect. So, oh, so and they something. probably misappropriate. And if you saw any misappropriation of something, if they grabbed onto something like they did and it was misappropriated in like ways that they didn't even address in other factors, now you're like, whoa, there's a bunch of falsifiable stuff you didn't identify. But when you identified this thing, it, it made all the things that were falsifiable were, are, were stated in factual ways. And there was no, there was nothing to counteract that. So you must be unaware of this. And if you're unaware of this, this isn't good like that. I need to erase everything I just heard come out of your face man, that's funny because I can't tell how many times I've had to completely reset myself because someone would catch me with something that I could falsify but not figure out. But they just like with the way my grandpa spoke about it, it's like he would talk up to the point that he didn't know and then let me know he didn't know and then he'd let me know why he didn't know or where he didn't need to know that for. And it's like, oh, if he can identify why he didn't need to know this or where he didn't pick it up because it wasn't necessary, I see. So I can learn right up to that point, stop at that cliff and go build my own bridge or find it somewhere else because he wasn't trying to fill in this hole with garbage. And more importantly, he also gave you points of interest because you said it right there. You're like, he'd give a cliff that at least now I know where I'm making a bridge like that. Mm -hmm. Like, Oh, sweet. Oh, I can go. I can just learn about that then. I'll go, I'll go real. Like, that's how a lot of my deeper knowledge came from. It was like, ah, what is this? Okay. I guess this is the only thing I actually need to figure out. Yeah. It's like, you're trying to learn A through D and he's, he gives you A and B tells you he don't know C and D just comes to him because he had to know that part. So, okay, cool. So I know AB, I think I understand D and now it's time to fill in C and D should fit in. So what would be a reason, what would be a, a reason why he would be able to like, cause I would imagine when he disqualified why he didn't need to pursue that further because nothing in that line would have made it like at his core, he's saying, well, for everything I need for this information has been true in the things that I don't know. I know that they don't like, regardless of where they go, it doesn't actually affect the truism, stay true for the use of what I'm going with. And even if I falsified those things, it wouldn't actually change what's true. Like, how is this? Yeah. Like, <clears throat> how, like, how did he, how is he able to convey that reasoning in a way that I say, I have to say is, I guess, believable because we're both talking about points of ignorance. So he doesn't know, you don't know, but he's trying to speak on a level of authority of why the ignorance in that area. Like I know enough to know that the ignorance there is not going to trigger it. And if it does, like, let's not say if it does, cause that opens I mean, up it'd be like very matter of factly. I mean, most of the time, and you can tell in the fluidity of his languages, like he seemed to be very aware of where his knowledge fell off and where he was about to speak on feels or, you know, just thinks it does. Cause he would basically stop the interaction and be like, so I'm not sure about this part, but, and, you know, he still, as a human, wanted to fill in a blank with something, but had the wherewithal to stop beforehand and be like, all right, you know, this is where my actual knowledge falls off. 
in the military, I learned about it up to this point. Combustion works like this, 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 and this. And then, you know, why oil mixes in is because of this and this. Okay, well now what part of the exhaust is the oil and what part's gas? I don't know. We didn't need to know that. But it oh. seems like it was this and the oil was being recaptured here. I'd be like, oh. Because philosophy and engineering are very different. The simple fact is we fully understand the how of quantum physics. We know that because all of our electronics work consistently nonstop. <laughs> but the philosophy behind it is irrelevant and it's a bad thing because as long as if, if equals then every single time, then why is irrelevant? If and then about well, so exactly, you have a bunch of programmers that don't understand electricity. That's fine for current application, but if you want somebody to progress the knowledge of it, they need to know both. Or to be able to manipulate it. You, can, you mm -hmm. can't manipulate a what without a how. And uh, th uh, there we go. Once we understand the, the what consistently and we've got math, so we have a language for the what, we completely forget about the how or the how come, which is even more interesting. Um, so I would imagine much like your, uh, your, your grandfather, I must have done that many, many times to you because you'd always let me think long form. Can you, can you, can you bring a story or a memory? Well, to by the time I met you, it was more like I had, you know, 37, 35 years of learning to filter. So I could see immediately when you were hypothesizing as opposed to stating, as opposed to trying to figure out in a statement, those type of things, you know, like, because I met you a long time later during that was still yes. like formative years trying totally. to build using the tools that I thought people were handing me. You know, it wasn't till later that I figured out that, you know, the tools are all around. You can pick them out as needed. If you pick out the wrong one, you're going to build wrong. But just don't take anything that anybody says as any type of tool because they're always going to try to hand you the softest, fuzziest, you know, most fitting to them tool. And that's not the tools that I need. No. Um, oh yeah, I, I'm, I'm not looking for a specific, I'm not, uh, there's so many types of drills. Uh, I'd rather have a screwdriver because I just need it. I need to know it turns. I don't need, I don't want it to be a specific turn. I need <laughs> to, I just need to have, uh, wow. I forgot what that torque. It's like, man, what's rotational energy called? There's a word for that. <laughs> um, so and let me ask you this. When you'd hear me speak, did, okay. It's weird. Cause it's like a meta question. Unsurprisingly. Did you know when I was, so I think there's three things. I'm theorizing because I don't know. I'm stating facts and then I'm, uh, wait, let me pull back. So there's, I'm stating facts. I'm taking facts that I know to build theories that I'm unsure of. And then there's the completely, I don't know. And I'm just running. I'm just running because I know I'll falsify myself through the course of talking. I, I, I like, I'm not taking Legos. I'm just, ooh, I'm building with Play-Doh rather than Legos where Legos are facts. And sometimes I'm telling you, and sometimes I'm building with Legos, but then there'd be a time where I would go straight to Play-Doh. Does that analogy work for, uh, does that make sense before I ask the question? Mm -hmm. So the question is, was it, would you notice when I was switching before the language change or was it, was, is, does the language give me slash people away? I, it's weird. I'm always talking about myself. I'm very self-centric, but you're the only one who can give me a good measurement. When you were listening to me, did it seem like I noticed when I, would you notice before I noticed? Now I know I didn't know I was noticing, but my language would tell me that I'm now trying to build rather than tell. Would, would, would yeah. You, I mean, it's like even in the beginning of this, when you were first stating facts about the basketball people and all that, you take a different like positioning in your language as to how you're conveying what you're saying. You're, you're, it's matter of factually, there's no fluff in there or anything. The second, any fluff starts coming in that's during your transition and then you go into building on what you just said and that's where the fluff and all that stuff starts so when you hear the the, the fluff how is there a clear way to distinguish uh you know i guess at its core i'm trying to build a molecule and the electron's gone fuzzy <laughs> i'm really just trying to narrow it down so it's gotten very fluffy what a I don't, there's something there and I don't know what I, I don't know what I'm trying to get from it, but I feel like you have more, you have more that you could say to that. Well, I mean, the worst thing is, is just after, or I say the worst thing is just, you know, for your situation is it's been so many years of me tuning in and then tuning out. So it's now gone into almost uh, the availability of autopilot. It's just that 
the second, lazy piece you know, of shit. <laughs> it, it goes from <laughs> I hear info, I hear info, I hear info, and then all of a sudden I notice my ability to hear basically my comprehension, my download cuts to like twenty percent because it's just listening for facts in the fluff because it went from facts, 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 and then a fluff came out. And the second the fluff comes out, it's like, oh, okay, we can turn this down now. <laughs> Dude, it's a lot of bandwidth to listen to something consistently and hold on to a message. So I totally understand. You're like, I'm trying to build a puzzle here. And yes, these pieces fit into yours, but they're not required. <laughs> <laughs> well, as Adam said, I mean, you know, like after you see, you know, go to a good speech where you're learning a lot or something like that. And it's like afterwards, everybody's all charged up and they want to go to the bar or something, you know, to release all this energy from them sitting there. If I was listening, I'm fucking drained. Like I am fucking shot because yeah, it was a hundred percent, you know, my whole bandwidth was given up there. You know, it's, it's a whole different thing when there's that level of information exchange happening. It's like, it's crazy draining on me. And I won't notice during the time, most of the time, unless it hits my extreme, which is somewhere between like two and four hours of solid, then it's like, ah, yeah, fuck it. The son bitch is running at like 80% now and I don't like that. <laughs> um, all right. So I guess what, what, so that's funny. So it's almost like now nah, I, you've, you've habitualized our conversation to be more effective and efficient, which is great. Cause I'd rather have your output than be me being heard. But even in, in, in I'm like, man, how do you know? <laughs> Question everything. This fluff might be valuable, but I guess, is it that you can safely assume that man, if it, if it's not fluff, it'll come back again, more solid. Well, it's, I mean, there's, I mean, different levels, I guess, like information, there's solid fact, which is, you know, his stats were X, you mm -hmm. know, then the, you know, I know our lines of fluff are vastly different, but as soon as it goes from, well, his stats mean this, that's fluff. Like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Fuck that guy. <laughs> stats are cool. Beyond that, that's all, you know, the human part. I mean. He could have lived a fucking cushy, comfy life for fucking 19 years where the dude fucking had the ability to practice every day, ate a clean diet, fucking had a semi-autistic wife that could deal with his bullshit or stayed solo because that's what worked or whatever, as opposed to the guy who could have done 10 times better but never had the opportunity. Like all that shit, that's all, you know, that woo-woo fucking bullshit that I don't give a fuck about. The stat is the stat. That was cool. And then, Yeah. Everything else is just part of the, the game, the experiment, or whatever. Okay. So when I went into the theory of the, the – okay, so, so I went from stats, which are hard, but then I went to people, what people were saying about that person, which is it's a, it's a statement of fact in the sense that they did say this is what they described about them. And a lot of my theories are built on basically soft descriptions of what people think they're seeing because I'm, I'm looking for their subconscious creator to say things, you know, that, that seems- It's like how the cops look at it, you know, like during an investigation, they ask 50 witnesses what they saw. One guy saw a guy, a red jacket that was white. The next guy saw a black jacket that was a black guy, all that. You take the conglomeration of them and you come up with what seems to be the best picture at best. And that's if you even care about what the picture was in the first place. It was basketball, so I don't. So it was kind of just, you know, at that point you're painting pictures and I'll take a look here and there, but it's not building or doing anything in me because it's not related to me. Oh, that makes sense. And a hundred percent, none of that had anything to do with you other than wanting to hear your reflections on my, uh, my theory. But uh, Dude, I'm pretty confident. The only issue is like, how do you, it's very hard to falsify or factualize what I'm trying to do. I mean, short of like, I just need people to start being willing to give me their DNA tests. Like, it's all I got at this point. Uh, we know that there's genes for both. We know that there seems to be epigenetics that can distinguish the differences between the two. <clears throat> and you don't have our DNA test done. So I don't even have our baseline. And right there, like, you know how much, like how much, like if I was a solid, I've immediately become a fluid. Just that single statement just ruins so much. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and we both know that there's like five, you know, at least five layers to it of the current testing that we could do right now that would help, you know, EKGs, things like that, you know, also knowing what's living and dying in our biodomes, you know, all of those different things would help give a better picture, but neither of us have the money first off to do it to ourselves or second off to get a sample size where they've done all of those together and then 
you've also met with them to see what that resulted as. Yeah. And I don't know if you notice, many motherfuckers are not interested in talking. And that's the part that really hurts. Like <clears throat> you're so powerful and not interested. And I need to, I need to win that battle. I need to win that battle of like, no, because it seems like you, you want to, you want to get as much out of what you are as you can, but it's very hard if in that process you're like, well, let's min max our strengths and clearly you function in a specific way. Let's focus on that. Well, you see where it is. I mean, like, like you've seen where I've gone for a minute. Like we like to talk given the stage, but if anybody else is trying to talk, then what the fuck are we doing talking? Like you can't learn while you're talking. I don't mind imbibing the knowledge to someone else, but they need to be fully attentive. If they're not, then I'm wasting my time. And also then I don't want to talk. So like, like I love teaching when I was at StubHub just because I've got, you know, 15 new bright faces that all think they want to learn this job. And I know damn well shortly they don't, but at least at the moment they seem to want to, they're all listening. No one's, you know, trying to take the stage or be the talker, the teacher, nothing else like that. So I love that. You know, I can sit up there and talk for hours. And I, I mean, I think it's safe to assume that I actually listen very well. When that's the point to it, yes. Yes, but unfortunately, it seems like the only time I'm interested in listening is when, I, when, I, when I'm in control of the question. It seems like if you came up with it, yeah. Like if that was your, yeah, in your realm of your thinking at the time, then yes, because you're looking for feedback on it. But... <laughs> If well, also I, verification or theory verification, like, hey, this just happened. I want to know your like internal experience. I seem to very like that's when I seem to listen very deeply. Hey, did this just? What about this? What do you think about this, this, and that? Like when I ask what someone thinks about something, it seems it's the time I'm actually listening. Yeah, well, I mean, it's yeah. I mean, and a lot of times too is like my response doesn't always line up it seems like with what you were thinking or trying to get out of me or whatever else like a lot of times you'll be like oh what's up what do you think about this this new electronic thing and i respond with oh just another way the government can monitor us you know i'm sure that had nothing to do with what you were thinking about you're probably thinking about you know the cool how the wi-fi can travel farther now using this rfid or whatever the case may be and i just you know it all adds into the picture that i see that we're just being sheep herded like a bunch of goddamn cattle. And so I respond that way. And well, definitely threw me off. <laughs> definitely threw me off. <laughs> I was not expecting that answer, but I didn't really give you a question either. I didn't cater. I didn't cater a question. Uh, I wasn't looking for, I didn't have a position that I wanted your specific opinion or use of. I merely thought this was interesting data. And in your matrix, it would be better to have this in your awareness than not. I, that was strictly like, hey, if you don't know of this, I want you to know of this. I didn't have a, there was no purpose behind it other than this is interesting. And it's interesting at a level where I think if he doesn't know, I would like him to. So that would, that mm. would make total sense. That was, that was the catering of that information very specifically. Different than like, hey, what did you have for breakfast today? shut up. doesn't really matter what they say. It's rude, but I don't care because I'm really just looking to see how they describe it or really what their body does. And then as quickly as possible, hit that mindfulness while it's still fresh, fresh enough in the brain to where maybe we can bring it to consciousness. Because again, I don't think most people know that they're telling me about their pictures. I think they're just answering the question and they're answering the question based on the pictures they see. And that is very different than looking at the picture and telling me. Well, it's like, that's all going again. They grew up in Rome, you know, like I even when I was talking with Anthony or whatever and trying to open his eyes to a few things and talk to him or whatever, I can already see where like he can't be open to outside stuff because there's so much outside stuff. You know, he's got teachers saying things, parents saying things, old parents saying things things that he came up with, you know, all these different things. So even with him, it's passing through this like multi-level filter that regardless, it doesn't seem like where the information is coming from, it's hitting a filter. So tell me more about that interaction then. I mean, the main one was him. I just asked him, you know, straight out, dude, you're 15. What do you think you're going to do when you get older? And he replied, a mathematician. I want to write papers. 
And I'm like, well, that's neat, but that's not a job. And he's just like, well, he named some name or whatever. And he just wrote a good paper on, you know, something to do with like Pythagorean theorem or something like that and how it could be used for something, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, that's nice. But he was also probably a professor at MIT for 20 years before he was given the credibility to be able to write said paper. And he's just stuck to, well, I want to be a mathematician. And I'm like, well, you need to find applicable ways to use that to build up the credence to where you can, you know, say something and people's going to listen to you because that's not how this works. And especially deep theories, no one's going to understand it. And no one's going to care to listen to you. You know, you gotta imagine 95% of the people who are out looking for that are normies who you're going to have to either have captivated in your action previously or captivate in this thing that you're writing. Well, the thing that you're writing isn't captivating. So you don't have anyone. Like, I don't know how to explain that. Like, you know, it's, it's you, the 5% that might want to read that are not going to find the way to you because they're only going to know of you through you having taught this for 20 years and 15 people over those 20 years came out to be X, Y, and Z in other scientific fields. So I'm like, you need to have a basis in reality basically. And why don't you, you know, start learning how to compile algorithms. I'm like, that's a useful thing. It uses math. And then that could be used at many different types of jobs. And then you could build on that. And it's like, well, I think I should be able to, you know, after I get, because he just got, of course, accelerated through high school and they're putting him in college classes and everything. So, you know, they're all telling him that he's great at math. So he wants to be a mathematician. And it's like, that's cute. You know, they all told me to crap like that too. (laughs) Because it's the easy answer. He's good at math, mathematician. There's not even a thought process. Like that's so unspecific. Like I've never heard such a specific generic answer. Like it's probably the most specific and most generic answer you could possibly give someone. You gave them water, an extreme base and an extreme acid. What the fuck are they going to do with that? Mm, 100%. I'm just telling you you're good at things. You know, if anybody had the balls to say you're not good at something, he would excel in that. You know, because he'd have to fill in that deficit. (laughs) Yeah. I'd love a motherfucker to come at you with what you don't do good. And let's see you in a month. Exactly, dude. I'd have loved to have that growing up. Oh, yeah. You're so smart. You just try harder. Fuck. <laughs> it had nothing to yeah, do with exactly. that. I mean, how many times <laughs> I heard, you know, you don't have to worry about it or this or that. Yeah, Maybe yeah, if you put a little work. concern in me. <laughs> wow. So, so it sounds like not that there was a goal of a breakthrough, and I don't, I, I don't necessarily even know if I could put the exact definition of what a breakthrough would be but that conversation seemed like it unfortunately was very flat and there wasn't very little that could be done about that yeah i just testing the waters yeah see where we fit in will we be part of the army or not and it seems like at this time not ready was it interesting to hear him speak Mm, no is that because people aren't interesting and He's, he's, he, I know he's far enough removed to where he's a chair. I understand that. If there's a level of captivation, like if, you know, he wasn't, if everything I was saying wasn't hitting a filter of some sort, then there would have been, but at every level, there was a filter pre-built in that didn't allow anything to just tap in. So at that point I'm done talking. I think the filter, I like that. I like that you keep using filter a couple of times and I've kind of understood what you meant, but that last point was kind of where you basically the negger, right? Woof, now I can't say that word again because uh, that was way too close <laughs> to other words. Um, a, a sheet that prevented knowledge to shine through and there was no reason for it to be there other than it was pulled. Yeah, I mean, like, like I said when I was talking about earlier about just listening to like a speech or whatever, something like that where it's imbibing knowledge. There's nothing going on in my head but that. Like, that's all I hear. That's all I see. That's, you know, I wouldn't even know I was in the room besides the fact that that sound is coming at me and I'm downloading. And he kept jumping to conclusions. Yeah, he had answers for everything. And if you have an answer, then you didn't hear the question. You were freaking answering. It's weird because I 100% agree with you as I say this statement. Yeah, man, but so often I just have an answer because I'm hoping that it can be broken. 
Like, here's everything you've said. This is the answer. Please break it. Like, so like I, I, cause like my whole life people are like, well, you don't, you just know everything. I'm just trying to be proved wrong. But there's, I think there's a difference between one. I might not be aware enough to be open to those ideas, but I think I am. That's why I feel wrong all my life. Cause that like, that seems to be like, that is, it's, it's a flash paper. You can burn that shit up real quick. Hit me with a question that I don't know. It's gone. And so am I, I I've been set ablaze. But when you have that level of intelligence and everyone's giving you answers that you can't, you're not trying to disqualify. Like he wasn't trying to disqualify his filters either. He was fully okay with that yeah i mean i understand getting the handoff but you can't take the handoff from that that's not the handoff you're trying to take no you know ask it a question don't let somebody trigger it handing you something if somebody said something and it handed you something that's wrong he was just filtering answers to you he wasn't applying and and creating anything Mm -hmm. was that frustrating did you have an expectation going in and was it not met or like you being you? It was more like a wonder. I wondered and checked and verified and moved on. I wonder what, the, what age is too late. I definitely think it's after puberty where it becomes drastically harder. Probably. I mean, that's the problem with, you know, you grew up in Rome, you know, Roman. It's, you know, it's how you've learned to interact with these people. They all answer before they've had time to think. So you seem to imbibe that. And since your answers are all like head and shoulders better than everyone else's, why would you use another way? Like, I can't even give you a good reason why you would. But, but, like, with, but yeah, you've got everybody like, around you telling you you're super intelligent, this and that, blah, blah, blah. So. But what is intelligence without the conscious mind? Well, that's the difference is you've got like, you know, book smart and applicable smart, you know? If all of a sudden shit hit the fan and you get hit with, you know, five different knowledge points, what are you going to do with those? You know, you got the book smart person that would know the correct book smart answer. It's like, you know, oh, which you is can incredibly limited this. by language and school of thought. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, 100 percent. You know what you grew up around? You know, did you grow up around a mechanic? OK, you're going to think to build a fucking car. You know, grew up around a fucking airplane guy. You're going to think to build an airplane. You know, but dismiss all of that you might find that the fucking hot air balloon is going to be the best bet yes uh so i'm also just curious did you i mean did you uh, i i it's funny I, my word goes to assault because that's how i feel like my questions are are, are asked they're, they're 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 not insulting but they are us an assault did, see man all, all of my questions would have not have been around that it would have been like i would have just wanted to i would have tried to get him to verbally explain his visual I guess is at his core, that would have been my, my whole, the basis of all of my going in, how I would have attacked that subject would have just been, I need him to describe his internal thought process to me because I don't want the answers to his questions. Those are being fed to him. I need him to reflect and actually I need to know the equation and not the equals. And since he's, you're telling me he doesn't seem to know the equation. Yeah. Well, pre that I asked him, you know, a couple different things. Like, do you know even how you learn? And he was, of course, came back with some semi-dumb answer. And it's yeah, a hard no. question, bro. There's very hard to give an intelligent answer to how you learn. Go on. And so at that point, I was just like, well, you know, if it is, if you take in better visually, you might take a look at, and I showed him uh, that Kurtzig and a couple, you know, good examples from YouTube or whatever, assuming mm-hmm. that he's visual because just in what I was watching of him when he was sitting on the couch, he seems to be more visual. So wait, are you trying to tell that. me autism is based on uh, Asperger's is based on a visual, not an audible <laughs> bro? You must be fucking with me. <laughs> <laughs> so tried to hand those off and I don't want to say it's a hundred percent dismissed, but it was probably like in the good high eighties dismissed. And so, you know, because without a point, there's not a reason. And then the volume gets turned down. Yes. Much like mm-hmm. fluff. If, like, it's not that it wasn't fluff, but he couldn't unfluff it. Mm-hmm. Well, when he couldn't give a complete answer, I let him know that he could have a complete answer and tried to hand that off. And that's where it was just like, you know, well, da, da, da. and it's just like, oh, all right, then. Because we went out probably like three times of different, oh, yeah. you know, where I pinned him down and asked a bunch of questions. But like I said, after the third time of the whole mathematician thing, I think that was pretty much the last time I talked to him. 
there's still like six more hours in that interaction. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah, I was I think, done. I tried. Yeah, a hundred percent. You you definitely gave you gave your full effort. I can't I can't wait till uh I can't wait till I get a swing at it. <laughs> <laughs> It'll happen in the next decade. We'll make sure of it. I don't know how, but oh, yeah, he'll be bum. Maybe trying to be a mathematician. Bro, I'm just trying to be a brand. I think that's pretty retarded, but I got to tell you, but you're right. Like I, at its core, actually, I'm not, that's not dumb. You literally told them like, dude, if this is your plan, you better get, a, you better have, a, a, there better be awareness around you because there ain't shit that you're doing that's interesting. And honestly, man, I don't want to shit on you, but you're not going to bring anything new to the table. You're just going to put a new measurement on something that was there before you. We don't invent math. We discover it. And I got to tell you, it's already been discovered. Here, read these four books. You'll never need to work again. These fucking retards like us wrote it down. No one listened, and they're all, they already exist. Might as well plagiarize. It'd be a lot. It'd be, you'd save time. What are you going? Mm-hmm. What, do you, what do you, are you going to add to the school of knowledge? Like I, I would almost immediately discredit that. Like, oh, what are you doing? You're not helping. You're not adding to anything. You're you're literally just spinning your wheels. And if that's the goal, cool. But by the way, it's a real hard wheel to spin for money. Exactly. I mean, exactly. If your basis was like a theoretical physicist and you're going to build math on that, cool. No, you're just talking about building math on math. We've been mathing since the motherfucking Egyptians and shit. So I like, don't think you're going to come up with nothing. Yeah. There's nothing to come up with. Yeah. Basically, if you just keep yourself real ignorant on current knowledge, you can come up with a bunch of new ish stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it's crazy, Dustin. It is. And because of the, the inability to care, not, not, not only you, but also him, it's almost why my mission seems more important. Like, I really do think, I, I, also, man, I were. So you'd have better off luck in like China. Like the same thing they do over there is they come in and when the kids are like zero to two, they check them for aptitude between two and five. They check them for physical ability. And if you seem like you have aptitude, they take you. If you seem like you're going to be a, possible Olympian, they take you, you know, they are already starting to understand that that comes at birth. And after that, it's just tarnished. You know, yes. putting it putting it around anybody or anything normal is you're burning bad imagery into the brain. Yeah. Oh, you're, 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 uh, you're wiring neurons mm. uh, effectively do chaos. Yeah. Not a good way. So they're starting to take it on the correct way. And obviously it has to come under communism is the only way you can just go in and take kids, but that's how it should be. Yeah, man. I mean, I would be in a lot better place and this world would be in a lot better place if they just came and took me. It's, it's hard not to argue that kingdoms are far better than democracies as well. Uh, and I mean, communism is just bad. Communism is a democracy, uh, a, a voted, a voted, a voted kingdom. And there's no lineage to that. Like kingdom, like kingdoms are very smart. The like, ha, it's very hard to explain like, yeah, I want it to last beyond me. And, I'm, uh, and that matters. Like it has a value beyond you. And now you start thinking long-term and then you start looking at like Da Vinci. One of the smartest things Da Vinci ever did was he's like, oh, I'm really good at painting too because I have a high level of dexterity and I have uh, a visual mind. So I'm just going to paint a bunch of pictures. And then with all the fucking cash, I'm going to, I mean, really dude, if you, when you really look at it, he outdid Newton. If you're talking in raw app, Newton wrote down a bunch of pictures that he saw in his head. Da Vinci applied everything, everything. It's fucking crazy, Dustin. I can't even comprehend. I, I don't even bother studying Da Vinci. It's, it, it, would be, it would be too distracting. It would be like the amount of time I would spend theorizing and thought leadershiping against any part of his life. Retarded just literally it would be so so difficult and i'm really happy dustin because i think at its core i think we've really figured out what what the tmc project's going to be it's going to be that it's, it's going to be a high level assault on on the conscious mind uh, on the filtering of thoughts and really hopefully it's gonna not hopefully i'm gonna make sure it gives us the awareness um there's a lot of autism channels out there by the way more but okay by a lot i know of five and let's be honest if there's five people with autism out there doing youtube that's a lot <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. They've got someone behind them definitely pushing hard. And I found a random a random black hole of people. No internal monologue. And that dude, that just they're just wrong. I'm sorry. 
you have one. I don't care how little it is. It's just not loud enough for you to know it. I refuse to believe that you are 100% accurate in telling me that you have no internal dialogue in your head, and even, uh, even if it is 100% autism. And I only believe that because you're speaking. If you're speaking out loud, you're speaking internally. If it's not bleeding to your conscious mind, does not mean it's not happening. Well, it's like there's, there's different levels to it. It's like I, I can go Thank periods you, Dustin, for telling me, for showing having, me. There's not always no monologue or no dialogue inside. When I'm in real time, like a lot of times it doesn't seem to have time to transition to language because it's not needed when it's just me and it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm in real time. But if I've, yeah, if you've got to speak it, there's a handoff of happening that's including language and, you know. Fun fact, all the videos where, uh, where people are interviewing people with no internal monologue, they're not talking about autism at all. Dustin, I'm like 95 to 99% confident that, that there's no neurotypical person that has that uh, without some level of retardation. And that retardation would cause probably a disorder for bandwidth to go to another spot. Like you're not, not using 100% of your brain. If, you, if you've lost 20%, that 20% is now going somewhere else and being utilized mm -hmm. at a higher level. Where? I don't think it's your sense of touch. <laughs> like, I don't see the guy who doesn't have an internal monologue and hypersensitive touch or deduces through touch because that like the problem solver maybe uses that bandwidth through that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there is no part of your brain that's, you know, not functioning. I watched this cool thing just recently on this blind jazz pianist and they went in and EKG and everything else and his entire visual cortex like exploded when he was on the piano freeforming. And it only happened when he freeformed on the piano. It wasn't when he was playing previous songs that went back into his recollection memory and muscle memory and all those different things, but when he freeformed. And he's right now considered one of the best freeformist jazz pianists and he plays all over the world, blah, blah, blah. And it's because he has the additional ability. He's blind, so he doesn't use that. And so it's there for him where he needs it, which is when he's creating. You know synesthesia, yes? Mm -hmm. I mean, clearly you're describing a form of synesthesia right there. I mean, mm -hmm. but even if he doesn't have it, by, by the definition of what synesthesia is, it's more like a statement of ifs, ifs and thans rather than a diagnosis. Can we? Well, exactly. A lot of times people aren't, you know, they're not going to be considered, I don't know what that would be called, where you can't taste, but, you know, like where your normal taste is messed up. So you're tasting numbers and things like that. You know, there's a miswiring. It's usually not so clear as that you have a, you know, malformation to where you can't see, you know, something that in your face, you know, it'd be like a deaf person using all their audible you know, parts of their brain in doing something that would be more measurable as opposed to someone who seems to have all their faculties together and they do have a sense of taste. It just malforms when certain, you know, activities are triggering. Did you listen to interviews by him and did he seem on the, uh, the hyperactive or the Asperger's uh, side of the spectrum? It was funny. It was kind of a combination, it almost seemed like, because he didn't like sitting there talking with the interviewer. He more than once asked, can we just go sit at my piano? And as soon as he was able to get the interviewer over to the piano, of course, he went reform and the person was mesmerized and he held the interview for the rest of the time with him just basically playing. We're so simple. It's pathetic. <laughs> Uh, on both sides, the fact that it is environmental change. By the way, what you're saying does seem more like Asperger's uh, environmental <laughs> change. I guess I'm trying to find a way of not saying hyper, uh, not trying to say attention deficit, but by hyperactivity, I guess I'm saying emotional. I'm, I'm, because the other per. Here's the so when you said a jazz musician, there was only one artist that came to my mind the second you described the visuals. If you were to guess what artist I would be referring to, who do you think it is? What is it Stevie Wonder? Kanye West, bro. Sorry, you stepped. You stayed. You stayed in the type of music. Oh, Kanye we West. Well, we were talking about blind and still I know. Played. I know too much raw. And but but uh, Kanye West has synesthesia. He clearly has ADHD. There's no question about. It. He has a, hy a hyperactivity. Mm -hmm. He has a, a massive creator, and he's clearly emotional. It's the hardest part about being emotional. You say a lot of dumb shit. Like you can't help yourself. It sucks. We um, in one very very random interview, and I need to find it because once I get the clip, it'll it'll show it. Uh, 
I think it was Oprah. So this will make it easier. And he's like, he, dude, he just says it off the cuff out of nowhere. Like he wasn't planning on saying, he's like, you don't understand. I see the music. And I think people just were off like, yeah, he fucking feels that music so hard. No, no, he sees the music. And I don't necessarily know what it is about. I think it just has to do with quantum theory and quantum entanglement. The simple fact is trues are trues, falses are falses. And whether it comes through visually or audibly, it doesn't really matter. If it looks beautiful visually, it sounds beautiful audibly. I don't know why. And I don't think we need to know why at this point in the, in the, in the process. But the, one of the reasons that he's able to create art that no one has ever heard is because he sees art that no one has ever seen. And he, mm. that's, 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 that's a reflex. That's not, that's happening to him. That's not some shit. It's the same reason why we build computer processors with the wiring nine or seven nanometers apart in each wire because you put them too close and the electrical conductivity jumps. So, I mean, you could just have your neural paths too close together to where the, you know, the electricity is flowing from one to the next or enough to where one translates into the other. And now you have, you know, the bleed. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or maybe even better, man, just like the, the canals, re, the, the actual, the channels changing, like by channel, I mean, uh, think, a, a river, river channels. We're talking those types of channels, not clickers. Yeah. The, I'm not surprised that one of the greatest musicians freeform and I would want to talk so much. I would have so many specific, I think that's my superpower, man. My specific specificity of questions when I have a theory that I'm chasing, I seem to be able to juxtapose if this and this, and if this and this, and then like, what does that tell you? Because it seems like the brains that are functioning that way, I can bleed it to the consciousness just enough. And when they're open to it, they'll actually give an honest reflection. With autism, with Asperger's, it's way easier because there's no ego holding it back unless I say, unless I'm actually, uh, uh, unless I'm applying things to them. That's the problem. The objectivity, that's still, there's, I, don't, there, I don't know if there's a way around that. I think that's part of the pituitary gland uh, and it's, it's, it's separate from the lizard brain and the limbic system, but it's too localized for it to get to the conscious mind as an object to be held and they, you know, they, they, it doesn't want to be part of them. Don't know why. Don't, honestly, I think it matters. I mean, that can go back to like even again, the thing of being in Rome. If you saw your whole life that people get upset when they're told that they're something, you have an auto response to be upset when you're told that you're something. I mean, if you change, do you think it that? From, do you think uh, that? How I mean, if you changed it around to, man, you've really supercharged that freaking Asperger's, something along that line, you might have a lot better response than, do you think you have Asperger's or I think you have Asperger's? Hey, I it's think you have like, Asperger's has never worked, by the way. Yeah, zero, no, zero, 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 zero hit rate. <laughs> you're throwing a wet blanket on them instead of telling them how high they can jump with that wet blanket in their hand. Weird. I've got to figure that out. I think that's, I think it's got to be very, very crucial because if, if I can't get their own prefrontal cortex to open up to the concept, like, dude, the strongest part of you isn't, isn't your Asperger's, it's your ability to hold on to it. Do you you're like, if you don't know that, please start appreciating that right now. Your genius is fucking useless without your application of said genius and your ability to hold on to it and utilize, like you ask the questions. You yeah, like and the I've learned to where we can play together as opposed to a lot of times it seems like, yeah, even the Asperger's people I've met or know, like what's his face, my nephew mm -hmm. there. It's just, you know, it's a thing and he's a thing and they're both in that circle above their neck and that's how it works. You know, I've learned that it don't have to be that way. No. You have complete control over it. Let it play when it's time for it to play, but the rest of the time it's not. Yeah. The rest of the time, it's it, it's too powerful to be to to allow said things, and and let and unless you're just the filter, like, dude, Newton and Tesla, they were slaves, straight slaves. I'm super grateful because honestly, I don't think they had any right to control their minds. I don't think they were. I don't honestly like. I don't necessarily know if I would even give them. I can't. I don't have a good reason why Newton should have been allowed to control his thinking because it seemed like it was fine doing it on its own. He just needed it. Just, it just needed a body. To, to, to put it out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, a couple of the things that I've seen with Tesla or whatever too, I love that he did a few things in that in experimentation and finding out that he was able to create like this basically gravity disruptor that would have had you supercharged the thing, basically made the earth fall apart. He wouldn't write it down. Because I didn't he know knew. that. Is there like a name to that story? Like, is there something I can Google to, to learn about that? 
over in, I believe it's Russia, there's an area of the ground that's just flattened out in a big circle. And there's yes. no rhyme or reason as to why it could be that way, because there's not enough manpower from then till now to figure it out. But at the time, it was during his experimental times where he was being, you know, supplemented by them to mm -hmm. look up a basically, I believe is a gravity disruptor. And it allowed the, you know, the, the atomic level hold together to release. And it was tested supposedly a couple times during that time. There was a big bridge collapse over in like London or something like that. There was this flat area in Russia. There was a couple other potential examples from it, mm. but because he refused to write any of it down, there's no written record of it beyond the fact that he was there when it supposedly happened according to the documentation presented by the Russians. I love everything about that. He would never need to write it down. It's in him. Uh, also, no fucks given. Like knowing it's bad, but not needing for people to know what he knows. Very weird, but very yeah, important. He, like, he proved his own theory. That was the point to it. Nah, he just like, it was never about any of us. It's 100%. Oh, yeah. oh, it's true. Okay, done. Period. Next. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And I see it could be bad. Why would I write that down? Oh, 100% could be bad. <laughs> what do you mean could be? <laughs> would be. You mean the people, like, especially he only has examples around him on how would. Or we we yeah. just, like, no need for coulds. 100%. I mean, the guy is named Stalin that's funding you. I mean, that's enough right there. <laughs> All right. That is, uh, that is amazing. Uh, we, are, we are hitting uh, an hour and 16 minutes. So uh, I want to try to keep the podcast at an hour long, which is also good for us. I know this. I think in this, I've got about four different cuts that I can get clips out of, which is really cool. Very excited about that. Um, Destin, I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna take a very similar train of thought. Because I, 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 here's the good news. I think after I cut a bunch of these apart, it's gonna really empower me. Sorry, just fucking power, bro. It's a real thing. I say sorry because I shouldn't need it. Um, but is but I'm gonna play the game by the rules that seem to be determined by me because I want to win. So let's not even let's not attach to it. What we talked about here and the thing that I'll be able to cut and put together is going to be very nice because it'll allow me to talk about it separately because uh, that's where, you know, the free form thought. And I think, I think I need to start doing basically what I, what I do with you in normal video form. Fact, 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 thought leadership. Fact, fact, fact. This is where I want to go from here. Does, when you hear me speak to that way, does that, I'm looking for the best way to convey the knowledge. I know we've talked about it a little bit a couple of different times, but is that, that seems to be a good way for me to start attacking things. Seems so. Yeah. When I talk to you and it's interesting, is that the format that seems to, because getting you interested to me is a very big measurement of sound theory and sound onboarding. Because again, you reflexively go to want, want, want. So if it's not, then it's obviously interesting. I'm not worried about who doesn't find it interesting. I know who's going to find it interesting. People like us. And you're my, uh, I want to use you as a tuning fork. No, yeah, it's like interest is, I think, a big difference even in between what you a lot of times are thinking and how I work. I mean, interesting to me is, you know, watching the world collapse in on itself. As far as getting me interested in answering a question, it's just by giving the facts, maybe throwing a little positioning out there and then leaving the floor open so that there's space to answer. Hell yeah. Sweet. I was wondering how I could start, uh, because I'm gonna, I think interviews, I think interviews are the, are the strength. You're 100 percent right. I should be doing an interview podcast. I work best when I'm interacting with someone because my my fire is fine, burning on its own, and it doesn't need anything. But it also is a wildfire, and it doesn't get focused. Uh, I'm trying to be a what a I don't know. I'm trying to take a fire and turn it into a jet engine, and the only way that happens is through it seems like a human interaction. And I think it, I think it only I don't know. Everyone it works with everyone. Okay, sweet. Um, and I think that's it. Do you have anything? Anything to say in closing? Don't get coronavirus. It's not good. I think I think we're going to be fine. The death rate's <laughs> actually quite low. Uh, <laughs> but well, it's uh, actually I think it's getting into surprising levels. People just don't realize. Everybody's okay, under reporting. I mean, they're trying to relate it up against the flu, which has 0.1 percent right now. We're sitting at about six percent mortality rate, but that's of reported. So we'll see. Yeah, man, I hate reports because I'm like, well, who? 
I don't want to, like, I have to disqualify so much before I can actually start to move, move something forward. You know, I don't know. I, I, I don't even know how it kills you. Can you tell me what its mechanism of death is? Like what's dying? I can tell you how, like, neur- I know how a lot of venoms kill you. I know how all things that kill you when they affect your, neur- uh, your neurons. I don't know what the corona system, d- what it does to you. I mean, I know the end result is a respiratory failure, but as far as the mechanism, I read a little bit on it, and it's actually really neat, is that so far they've identified it as taking on 20 different forms. It sits in you during its incubation period, and, well, they don't know what triggers it to all of a sudden go from its dormant state to its trying to take you out state, basically, but it seems to sit there roughly 14 days and then spontaneously goes into kill mode or just makes its way through you. They don't know what triggers it right there. Um, but on the other side of it, after the trigger, they have found between 17 and 20 different manipulations of its output. So where they're talking about, you know, like the influenza A, B, and C, those go around the world every year. And by the time it's made it around the world once, it's malformed enough to where our previous immunizations no longer work because it's changed that much. Hmm. This thing in three months has changed into 20 forms, roughly. So you would need 20 inoculations, and that's at its current state. If it goes six months at this rate, we should be at about 60. So if it continues to malform itself at the rate it's doing, there will be no potential for a stop it because it's changing too quick. Sounds viral? Not bacterial? No, it's 100% viral. So until we decide to quit doing the whole guinea pig testing and basically have some balls to make a preventative and just start giving it to people, we'll never have the time to get ahead of it. See, I would just figure we'd let people die off. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's that's what's going to happen. I mean, with Trump in place, I love his thing. He, He said it straight up on TV. It's all about the numbers. Oh, guess what happens if we lose 40% of the elder population? A lot less people sucking off the Medicaid. I like, I like the pragmatic to, pragmatic to a, 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 an extent that people find it heartless, but that's pragmatism, and it's not heartless. I mean, not this actively- is going to be the stepping stone for us to go into the actual 21st century. I mean, we're actually now forcing people to go to online schools. We might have online voting. Betting now is going to become online legal because no one's allowed to go down to the betting parlor a lot of necessity is going to now have to push into technology, which was lagging crazily before because we had a bunch of old people in power that were afraid of the system, how it works. Now they have no choice. That's hilarious. That's, uh, it's funny. I, 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 cause I, I was, I, I, my, my thought process was one go keto. It's just hard. It's just a hard environment to live on. It's just very, very hard for things to, like, if you're constantly feeding everything in your body, irrespective of what it is, bacteria, viral cells, all of it, ah, remove those carbs, man. You'd be, you'd be pretty amazed. Everything dies without oxygen. And if the viral, like, how viruses work is very weird. If it's a, most viruses live off of cells, but they don't have ATP. They die because- Yeah, no, exactly. They attack and make it reproduce of itself. And that's where the, this one's kind of been wonky compared to the rest is that it's able to malform its offspring in a way that it's still effective yet can't be detected by the parent. Like if you looked at the parent, the, the offspring has no resemblance yet the offspring can do exactly as the parent did. In my last theory, and not theory, but like, I don't know. I, I also want to de-weight it because there's always a virus during election season. Like you could literally... There's, there's like a name every four years of, uh, of viral fear mongering and none of them have ever turned over. And like, I'm a man of statistics and I get it. Yeah, it's a 20 sided dice. It's going to come up 20 every so often. I don't necessarily, I don't know if that's like, I, oh, it's I, not blood, bubonic plague level. No, no. You, uh, that it would or it wouldn't unlikely. No, I, um, I say unlikely because that had like a, 80% mortality rate. This has like a 6%, but the, you know, looking at the numbers then compared to now, we could potentially lose more people off this one just because of the sheer numbers of people that are here. Yeah. I'd really want to see a pie graph of what that age rate is though. Really would. 
I think I, I like there's so many ways you can aggregate it that you you cannot aggregate it. You've got to always have like no matter what it is. Okay, that needs to be a pie. Whatever, whatever, whatever the aggregate is, pie it. It's good. Well, that's what it is. Yeah, mortality based on age group because mm-hmm. you know that six percent is a blanket six percent, but it might be closer to twenty percent for the elder population compared to two percent for the younger population. What about it's tra- still killed? Go on. That? It's, it's, say, it's still it's still killing people of younger. I mean the uh, what the hell was it? One of the like basically CDC guys over in China, he was 27. He died. So it's not like it's immune to it because we're younger. But we don't know what he died from. We know he died and he had that. Like there's a, there's so like death is not black and white. There's a many reasons he could have died. Yeah, well, I mean, and that merely allowed underlying, it facilitated. They call it underlying conditions is yes. if you have asthma, you know, your mortality rate based on it jumps like fourfold. If you have diabetes, Bronchitis, all of those. Yeah, diabetes, it seems to jump like 20-fold, you know, so there's like underlying conditions, but I mean, look how shitty of a population we are. Everybody's got underlying conditions. Yes. Okay. (laughs) They're all shitty. Yeah. What's the transmission? Is it through like coughing? Um, It seems to be able to live on surfaces for 48 hours, plus they don't know. So, but normally things die on hard surfaces after about two hours or exposure to sunlight. And this one seems to hold true for about 48. Hmm. That's interesting. That's a lot of life. Yeah. The only other one to have that far is HIV. But HIV needed bodily fluid to live within. It needed speckles of blood to keep itself alive, even if the blood dried. Yeah. This one can live on a, you know, door handle through sweat from the palm. Oh, okay. Uh, Last but not least. Do you like the change of the background? Do you like the way yeah, the camera centered cool. in the pictures? Yeah. Nice. Oh. Perfect. What was that, by the way? Uh, let me know. I got to start getting ready. Hell yeah. What you can't see is right here on videos, I'm having the TMC logo, uh, the TMC project logo right there, just uh, in the post. Uh, and I'm doing like uh, headers in the beginning and end of the one. The Yesterday's episode, I got the beginning in. I didn't get the past in. Uh, for a bunch of dumb reasons, but let me let you go so you can get ready. And uh, uh, huge increases on the TMC project page. Uh, uh, I, I can't go into all of them, but a couple of other things, shit we'll talk about next time. We are out of time. 90 minutes is a good amount of time. Um, if you find anyone and has a name that's worth talking to, please write it down. I, I, I would love a hit list, especially some like especially if it's handed to me. I, I'll, I'll probably chase it a lot harder for all the stupid reasons that it's true. Cool. Cool. <clears throat> I love you, brother. Like Wednesdays? Yes. I mean, if you sent, yeah, yeah. because I, I'm going to start, I've got to get other interviews. I just, I know that like, dude, I'm, I'm super interested. I'm saying our next one is Wednesday. Today's Thursday. We pushed it off a day. Yes, we did. It's Wednesday. It is Wednesday. Yes. Uh, I don't okay. even know and what day it going is. going forward. Yes. Yes, please. Okay. Same time, same place. Cool. I love that pink background. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great night, Alan. brother. And, uh, Hope, uh, oh, I did set up the anchor. I, I, I set up anchor. So I've already got that podcast part set up. I did a lot of the fundamental work today. I'm going to work on the actually getting the website fully live. Just so you know, the, the, the I1, I2s, man, real bad. I1 through 3, pretty shitty about. It sucks. But I know once they're done, they're done. And that's probably why I'm not doing them. But today, <laughs> this was a great conversation. I did a Facebook Live this morning about meditation. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much all the shit I've got Sweet. to talk. Yeah. So you got to give it a home. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't do anything yesterday, bro. Let me tell you. I'm sorry. It's all good. I had company, so neither did I. Yeah, well, you tried. That's all we can ask. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, brother. I'll talk to you. Bye, later. brother. Be good. <laughs> that was a crazy video. I. It's just crazy how the mind works and how little so many of us know about it because we just don't talk about it enough. We don't have the language, and it's so rare that we actually ask what's happening in that inner state and what it's like. For me, it's the most interesting thing and the thing I focus on really most. It's kind of the the mission. Uh, So also some just recapping behind the scenes. Website's still not done and still being worked on, but that's kind of part of the process. You've got to keep moving forward. The discipline because of Corona, I mean, let's just, I don't want to make any excuses. Simple fact is I'm not getting it done at the rate I am. Even as I do this episode, we've already recorded a third episode, and I completely edited and finished that one. 
and today I'm getting all three done so we can get them uploaded on Anchor and on Facebook and on YouTube and all that fun stuff. So if you're enjoying this content and you're enjoying seeing really a deeper deeper insight into how the mind works for neurodiverse people with ADHD and Asperger's, really the the two ends of the bell curve that have really jumped mankind and creativity forward, smash that like button, subscribe, share it with your friends. I'm leaving a lot of the background stuff unedited so that way you can kind of see the conversation behind the conversation because it's probably the most real that most people experience and I hope you're taking something from it. So keep going and Let's go.